four, three. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, and it's where America's hanging out to have a conversation about your life. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, Ramsey personality, George Camel. The phone number to jump in on the conversation today is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. I will uh, dive in on your work questions. You want to get a bigger shovel. Ken, I want to get promoted. How do I make more money so I could speed up the baby steps? I'm your guy. I'll help you get a bigger shovel. Uh, some of you are going, Ken, I just need help because I don't enjoy what I do. I'm on my way. I'm paying off debt. I'm wanting to know, can I work the baby steps but also take steps towards doing work that I really, really love, pursuing the dream. Is that possible? The answer is yes. We'll take on your specific situation. And, of course, George is here, our money guru. He's going to help you with your money questions as well. And so it may be the day for some of you to call in and go, you know what, uh, I need to call. I'm nervous about calling. Uh, we will change your name and your location. We understand that these questions many times – many times are very, very sensitive, George, and we have no problem changing your name and location so that you feel confident to call in and get some help. So we are here standing by, 888-825-5225. Got some fun stuff we're going to cover today. George, you doing well? I'm doing fantastic. Ken, yeah. you just had the minimalists on your show. So yeah. That must have been a good time. Good time. And uh, I must say, uh, for those that will uh, see you on YouTube today, uh, this shirt is very interesting. I don't find that uh, you are much of a football fan from you what know, I know of you, and yet you have miniature classic old football players and uh, footballs all over your shirt today. I, I think it's irony, and I find humor in irony. Uh, so you bought it because you thought this will be a funny shirt to wear? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You ever do that? No. Okay, just me. Yeah, I, I uh, don't try to be funny, but but I like what you're doing there. It's a great it's, shirt. It's football season. There's probably yeah. a big game somewhere yeah. this weekend. So oh, I, thought, I see. You just you sat back, and I see that you've got a grill there's on grills. your pocket. Yeah, it's, it's just football culture. Grill Everything it football. Yeah. All right, and George just learned recently what football is, so that makes it even more This is fun. why you've got to watch the show. Yeah. You get to see things like this. That's exactly right. In an HD, maybe we'll have the guys zoom in on your shirt later in the program, and we'll do a full diagram and break down but let's get to the phones that's why we're here to help you it is your show we're going to start off with marcia who joins us in atlanta georgia marcia how can we help oh uh, thanks for taking my call you bet um my husband and i um have been working the ramsey plan about two years ago and we sold our home and we paid off over one hundred and forty thousand worth of credit card bill. Wow. 140000 in credit card bills. Yes, my husband was <laughs> uh, I guess he was just caught up in uh, trying to get extra cards to pay, you know, and transfer um, balances and just got caught up in a lot of credit card mail. What was he buying? Um, well, we had, we were uh, you could call it living the Vida Loca uh, Living La Vida. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> but you know what matters, Marcia, is that you guys got on the same page and paid this off. That's unbelievable. Yes, we did. That's so now, yeah, we are in a situation um, that I really need some help with. Uh, we have over 300000 300, worth of student loans uh, between myself and him. And we have five investment properties, three we own outright, and two we have a mortgage on. And, you know, we're thinking, should we sell uh, the investment properties to just get this student loan out of our lives? That's the only debt that we have now. Or should we continue to rent these properties and just use our income to pay off the student loans? What is your household income? Our uh, household income is about 200000 Okay. Great income there. And you've got mm -hmm. 300000 in student loans, making two hundred. 
I mean, if you wanted to, if you wanted to get intense, you can just use your income and pay off these student loans. Now, if I'm in your shoes and I've got five rental properties, uh, two of them having a mortgage on them, I want you to be uh, completely debt free as soon as possible. So if I'm you, I'm selling one or two of those mortgage pro um, uh, properties to pay off these loans. What are these properties worth? Well, um, they were, they're both worth about 200000 but one of, I mean, we paid dirt cheap for them, like 20000 So, well, the mortgage, oh, the mortgage property, sorry. Um, the mortgage property, probably about 250000 and one is worth 200000 What do but you owe? Have, what do you owe on each? On, on the one that's worth 200000 we owe sixty eight thousand on that one okay and the other one we owe 123 wow well, so there's your answer <laughs> i'm hearing if you sell the two with the mortgage on them you could pretty much be debt free like tomorrow mm -hmm. yes and right. you still have three paid for properties right i'd put a mm -hmm. i put a sign in the yard of both of those two that you have a mortgage on today uh, that 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 is good. Yes, that's that's what I was thinking. That's what I thought you all would say. Well, you are thinking properly. <laughs> Glad we could give you some confirmation there. Well, you guys have done really well on, on that side. I think you were just doing some things out of order. And now once you pay off these student loans, you've got three paid for properties. You're going to really build some wealth. And my take is that you're going to buy your next properties with cash. De most definitely. That's what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, you guys have done really well. We're cheering for you. Get rid of these properties. Get rid of these student loans. Way to go, Marsha. And you know what's great? Uh, you can hear the husband in the background. Like, they're all in. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what I really loved about that call? When we first, you know, started talking to her and you asked, what was the debt? They paid off like 140000 In of credit card debt. And you were like, what was it? And she was like, hee, 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 <laughs> my husband. And it was so sweet in that he was completely off the reservation. And somewhere in that story, we didn't get it, they got on the same page. Yeah. And paid off $140,000 with a credit card debt. And now look at them. They I were, mean, it was clear they're doing. They're willing to do whatever it takes, yeah, even though they've made some that. mistakes. They're they're owning up and going. We don't want to live this way anymore. We're done living la vida loca. Oh yeah, That's that was great. That was America the line of the day. America needs to decide. We're done <laughs> living la vida loca. It's smoke and mirrors. It's a house of cards. Yeah. You know what? I'm embarrassed to say I don't actually know what that means. Okay, Ken. Can you I'm translate? Of the age. It? Yes. You were bilingual. A very popular Ricky Martin song ah, back in the late '90s, early I 2000s. I now remember. I am embarrassed to say I forgot. I, it felt familiar to me, but I was like, I can't place it. I'm wanting to sing it on air, but I think the FCC might shut us down. Oh, we don't want to do that. I want all the license for a lot of reasons. I what think, does it yeah. mean, though? Uh, it means living, living the crazy life. Ah, thank you very much. Living the good life, you know? I didn't right? know. I didn't know. They're laughing at me in the control room. I don't mind. Okay? I just taught you some I, Spanish, Ken. I feel pretty good. I feel a little bit more valuable. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? <laughs> well, you know, I would take offense to that, but compared to you, George, I am the old dog, and I might as well just own it. Hey, uh, folks, we're just getting started. We're here to help you on your money questions. You want to get a bigger shovel. You want more out of your life and work. George and I are here together, teaming up to help you. Somebody needs to call. 888-825-5225. Don't move. More of your calls and more of The Ramsey Show coming right up. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular and roller shades, or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
Welcome back, America. You have joined the conversation here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel. We're taking you through this hour, 888-825-5225, Boy, I'm going to take a stab at this one. I, I like to say that I'm hooked on phonics, George, and I'm looking at the board. I'm going to go, it's you, uh, Claire. Wisconsin, we'll see. Ken joins Eau us Claire. there. Eau Claire. Eau Claire. Oh, I blew it, Ken. I'm so sorry. How can we help? Hi, my name is Ken. Yeah, it's a good name. <laughs> it is a cool name. <laughs> hey, uh, I've been an artist my whole life. I've made excellent money. I've actually uh, paid off my mortgage twenty year, 10 years ago. Wow. Uh, with with the sales of art. But ever since then, life kind of took a real deep turn and I've been underemployed, and I, I, it's all I needed to hear was your philosophy, and I've agreed with that my whole life. But I've been doing things like moving dirt, hauling gravel, driving truck. Right now I'm way underemployed, and I can't do anything other than pay my bills. Uh, but marketing, I, I, I've got a website with my artwork. Uh, nothing has ever happened with it. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to market my artwork to get people to see it. Yeah. Tell me about the artwork. What kind of art is it? Well, it's a wildlife landscape realism. Okay. Uh, forgive me. Painting, I'm assuming? Yeah, painting. Yeah, okay. Correct. Have you ever sold one painting? Well, did I ever. I got a huge corporation out of Chicago. They're the ones that have paid my mortgage. Uh, they helped me add on 20 years ago. I've been buy- or selling to them, and they have given me like over a hundred thousand dollars in my life so you were going through a broker essentially no no just uh i went to the fairs and i went to the the fairs brought me to galleries and then the galleries uh uh, had customers come in and then uh, i had personal contacts Uh, they wanted to meet me personally and so wait a second wait a second Wait, wait, wait 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 let me make sure i heard you properly 20 plus years ago you made really good money selling the very paintings that right now you're having a hard time selling. And George just said, well, what'd you do? And you just listed it off. You rattled it off so fast. I couldn't write it down. <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, no, no, no. I you, didn't. You, Ken, you've done this before. What am I missing? Uh, I guess a trust that one customer cannot pay my whole life's income. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess my point is, is Ken, it is, Ken, have you had success selling paintings? That's where I was going. I had no idea you had had that kind of success. I'm blown away. So answer the question. Have you had success selling paintings before? I have, uh, yeah. yes. And you had a personal painting. contact. There yep. you go. You know what it is? You got to get back out there again. I don't know what the actual fear or doubt is, but that's the issue. The issue is what is the fear? What is the doubt? And I mean specific voice you're wrestling with right now. I want to know, because that's what's holding you back. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. That is, that's one I've been asking all my life. Yeah, but I'm At not going to let you off the hook. Me. I'm not going to let you off the hook, because right. I think you know. Good. I want you to own Lay it. Lay into me. <laughs> own it. What, Lay into me. Well, I am. I'm trying. <laughs> Tell me, what are you most afraid of? What do you doubt the most? That it's not going to be uh, uh, a steady stream okay let's let's now let's dive into that okay let's dive into that maybe it won't be a steady stream at first maybe it'll take a few years to get it to a steady stream maybe that stream won't be enough to fully take care of your needs but is that really the issue because you can do other work that'll keep you going you're doing it right now so what are you really afraid of you afraid that it was a, a whim, that it was a chance, that one massive corporation liked your stuff and they paid you well for it, no one else on the planet's going to like your stuff, and because you've done a crappy job at marketing your art on the web, don't judge yourself by that. That's not how you got success the first time around. feels like, to me, you've got to dust off the old plan, and that was good old-fashioned hustle. Shoe leather to pavement, Ken. And you've got a track record. Yeah, I need, I need ideas. I guess I, I just need ideas. 
Okay. Uh, you know, other than being a blogger, you know, I, I've been going through this stuff. Uh, it's so much crap on the internet. You try to look up this information, and yeah, but here's everybody my point. wants you to be a blogger. And, I know, but Kim, uh, you're you're still missing it. I don't think blogging is the answer. I think you getting back out no, and showing your work again. I think for some think reason. Go ahead. Are you saying start over like the art fairs again? Yes. Yes. Who's buying art? Where are they? That's where you got to go. You're trying to do it online. I didn't do, I didn't do very good with the art fairs because I it was marketing. I didn't learn. It was like a marketing lesson to me. I came there with four thousand dollar items at a at a two hundred dollar uh, show. You know. All right, I understand, People, but here, here's know? the deal. I'm trying to simplify this for you because I am not an expert in the art market, but what I am good at doing is simplifying the complex. And you are facing right now what feels like a very complex problem. I'm simplifying it for you. Who? And you don't have to answer this right now on the air, but this is your homework assignment. Who is buying four thousand dollar pieces of art? Who is buying 4000 and higher dollar uh, pieces of art that are in your particular style? Forgive me if that's the wrong way to say it, but you get my point. Where are they? George, you brought up the broker issue. You know, who's, who's out there helping sell those things? This is good old-fashioned research. There's a market for it. And, Ken, I think the most important thing is is for you to remember that you've made a lot of money selling art before. This is not a pipe dream for you. This isn't some willy-nilly crazy notion. You just got to get hustling again and be willing to deal with rejection. That's what's going on, George. I'm telling yeah. you, right now, you're going to hear some no's, but you're going to have to step into those no's to be able to get some yeses. And you're so worried that you got the only yes that you could ever get that it's clouding your judgment. Yeah, there are so many people out there, Ken and Ken, who who want to buy really great artwork at that price point. So if I'm you, I'm going to find every avenue and try it and see what works. Go to your local coffee shop and say, hey, can I hang my painting in here for free? I'll let you guys have it in here for free if you'll just put my information underneath it. Hey, I'm going to go on TikTok and show people the behind the scenes of how I do my artwork and get people excited about it and show them how much work I put into this. Maybe you start an Instagram and try there because that's a great visual social media place where people are already hanging out and you start using some hashtags. There are so many avenues to learn about marketing through YouTube, LinkedIn, wherever, where you can really start to test out where are these people at who really appreciate yeah. what I do. How about walking into a local art gallery, talking to the owner and going, hey, here's my background. 20 years ago, I did this many pieces of art for this company. That's impressive. That's credible. And you go, hey, can I show you a couple of pieces? I got it in the truck. And I'm, I'm just, I want to start putting my stuff back out. What kind of deal do you want? If you sell it, what do you want for it? The answer is whatever. Whatever they say, say yes. You got to start showing your work and get it back out there again. But I can tell you right now that the fear of rejection and the fear of failure are hanging out on both of Ken's shoulders right now. Yeah. And it has clouded his ability to see that he was successful before. He can be successful again. He, he thought it was, well, it was my one. I did it back then. I'll never do it again. It was yeah. a stroke of luck. Yeah. You know, I've heard Dave say this before, uh, that, you know, making the second million is easier. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. You got some history. Inside of that history are is some skill. Inside of that history is some experience. And um, when we embrace that and go, wait, I've done this before, I'm not starting from scratch. It's not this new thing. I know I can do this. Then all of a sudden, confidence emerges. And I think, Ken, the name of your game is confidence. You got to get your confidence back up. Put yourself out there. It's worth it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't do this second time around, you're going to get to the end of your journey and be sick with regret. Don't regret. Reminisce. Go after it. Put your work out there. You got this. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. 
Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2, and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. Welcome back, America. You are joining The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel. We're taking your calls this hour, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. And we're now going to go to Victorville, California, where I see on the screen, Stefan and Lisa are on the line, George. And I'm told you guys are on the line to do a debt-free scream. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Well, welcome. Thank you so much. You bet. All right, let's get to the story. How much debt did you pay off? We paid off over $124,000. Wow, $124,000. Okay, and uh, how long did it take? That took four years of really just hitting it every single paycheck. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of money. That's unbelievable. Tell us your range of income during that time? We, from that time that we started, we were about 150000 and then um, ended up at about 250000 Whoa! Okay, we can't go any further. i got to know what led to the $100,000 in increase. Uh, my wife got a promotion to be a principal. So. Oh, nice. Oh. Very nice. By the way, I like what happened there, George. You know, Lisa was like, I'm going to let you tell them. Yeah. Way to go, Lisa. How does that feel? Oh, it felt good. Thank you. <laughs> That's impressive. Uh, all right. So uh, tell us what this debt was. What made up this $124,000? That was student loans that I had accrued, you know, bachelor's degree, master's degree, my PhD. I just kind of racked it up. Okay. All right. Very good. And, so, and then we had a car loan as well that we were able to pay off. All right. Okay. So pretty normal stuff there. So. Right. Take us to four years ago when you guys start this journey. What led to this? I think we had done the Financial Peace University early in our marriage, and so we knew the, the steps and we knew what we needed to do to make it happen. Okay. And so what was the, you kind of knew, but was there a moment where you went, we've had enough? I mean, what led to this? Because this is, we're talking about intense, $124,000 over four years. I think finally seeing that uh, the student loan was actually due, so it made like an impetus that we had to start really attacking it. So that made it our number one goal was to pay as much as possible every month and just attack it, you know. So you got sick of giving a chunk of money away every month, and you went, we don't need to do this anymore. We make good money. We want to live life on our terms and have this money back in our life attacking our goals. Exactly. I love it. So what, what did you guys actually do? What were the sacrifices you made along the way? The sacrifices were things like cutting back on the big vacations and uh, thinking about refinancing where, where we could with our mortgage and getting better rates there so that we would have a better uh, monthly mortgage payment. And just, you know, following the, the gazelle intensity of paying it down and communicating and knowing that this was our our combined goal to get this out of the way. Wow. So you reallocated a lot of this money that could have gone to a lot of places, and you said, nope, it's got an Definitely. assignment. It's going to this debt. What was uh, 
Is there something that sticks out to you all as maybe one of the toughest things you had to deal with? It was really, really tough. Maybe maybe it was along the way and you felt like, oh, we're hitting a lull. Well, what, what was a real challenge for you on this journey? I think in the middle, it just got kind of hard. You know, you didn't see that much of an improvement. It's, you still have that insurmountable mountain you're climbing, but then yeah. you just have to keep, you know, put your head down and just keep moving through and trust the process. So and what was the, what do you think the key was? The last, the last loan. For another couple out there who may be where you guys are at, six figures in debt going, well, we're just going to pay this thing off for 20 years. What would you tell that couple <laughs> the key is to getting out of debt? Right. Absolutely. What was the key? The key was just trying to do right living like no one else so that we could live like no one else. So you had to change your mindset and go, we've got to live differently right now so we can live differently later. Hmm. So who are your biggest cheerleaders on this journey walking you through this? Like that middle period, Stefan, that you just mentioned that was so difficult. We didn't feel like you were making so much progress. Who helped keep you in the game? I think we, we could say our church family that, you know, started us on FPU so many years ago, and then um, we were leaders at one point, and just being that example, too. You know, we we can talk it, but we had to live it as well. Walk the talk. Yeah. That's right. been a theme this year. Yeah, really has. Definitely. So uh, George asked you kind of what the key is, but as you guys sit here today, you're about ready to do this scream. How would you encourage um, others that are listening? Because at some point you all listen to other people do what you're about to do. What would you say to them if they feel like they're in this lull or they don't know if they can do it? What's your advice to them? Um, just keep keep grinding. I mean, the, I mean, it looks insurmountable, but you know, one step at a time, and you'll get through it. And find that the extra side things that you can contribute to make it a little bit easier. Like Stefan said, it's in the middle, it's still monotonous, and you're looking at the shiny things that you could be spending your money on, and you have to just deflect to what you know would be the right choice. Yeah. Wow. Well, let me tell you something. You all, um, you're an inspiration. You're heroes. You've done something that uh, is very, very difficult to do. You've shared that story, and you stuck together, and now you're on the other side of it. What does it feel like? Such a relief. Such a relief. Absolutely. Yeah. You've heard Dave talk about the grass feeling different. Is that true? What feels different specifically as you guys walk through your everyday life? I think not having to worry about extra debt, extra payments we have to make. You know, now it's savings and different other projects we can do and we can save for that yeah that's awesome and uh i see a picture here uh the two kiddos tell us about the kids and 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 their ages because we know they're going to benefit from this unbelievable sacrifice that you've made absolutely we have ryan our son he's now seven and elizabeth is now four and they're learning the the system. They know that if they don't have the cash, we're not going to give them a card. <laughs> wow. They should run for Congress. Oh, Very hey, impressive. Hey, that'd be great. <laughs> Very nice, George. Very That's nice. That's impressive. I like that. Changing well, a family tree. Hey, uh, Stefan and Lisa, we want to gift you with two books uh, to uh, thank you for sharing your story, but also for you all to be- to keep moving forward. The first is uh, Dave's book, The Legacy Journey, because that really is the next step for you all on your journey. You really are living and giving like no one else. The second is we want to give you a copy of Dave's uh, wildly popular best-selling book, Total Money Makeover, and that is a gift for you all to give to somebody else uh, who you can now say, hey, this works, and we want you to be able to pay that forward in their life as well. So we want to give you those. Uh, so awesome. we'll, yeah, so, so we'll send those out to you. All right, let's do this. Stefan and Lisa from Victorville, California. They paid off $124,000 in four years, making $150,000, then up to $250,000. Stefan and Lisa, take it away. Let's hear your debt-free scream. We're debt-free! All right, there it is. Another couple. Debt-free. Another student loan bites the dust. There it is. Uh, A whole bunch of it, too. Yeah. I mean, that was a big, big chunk of what they paid off. That's a chunk of the $1.6 trillion sitting out there. Oh, man. 
Man, oh man. And, uh, you know, it's great when you hear the stories, but you realize that there's kids involved. Yeah. You know, and, and these kids are learning to not ever fall into that same trap their mom and dad did. But you think about the life that those kids are going to lead as a result of what their mom and dad did. I mean, this really is legacy. And I love that we give them a copy of the legacy journey because that's what this whole thing is about, George. Yeah. they've You've got to teach these kids this stuff early on. And these kids caught it. It wasn't just taught. They saw mom and dad sacrifice along the way. And I doubt they're ever going to touch dad after hearing this story, Ken. No. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Thank you again, Stefan and Lisa. You are heroes. Thank you for sharing your story. Countless people will be inspired to do what you did. So thank you again very much. He is George Camel. I'm Ken Coleman. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. Welcome back, America. You are joining the conversation here on The Ramsey Show. Uh, if you've been paying attention to any news, you've probably heard the term the Great Resignation flying around, and uh, it's the big name that people are kind of putting on this massive job turnover situation going on uh, in this country. Uh, people are saying, hey, um, I don't like where I am. I want to level up. I want more out of my work and so they're leaving and looking for something better now you may feel like now's the right time for you as well but if you don't have a clue what you actually want to do uh, then you may not even actually get what you want and move to something that's going to be better for you in the long term you need a plan and you're right work isn't supposed to be a four-letter word you can find work that will leave you feeling energized and fulfilled you can make the income and the impact you want out of the same gig and that's why i wrote my brand new book that reveals to you the clear path to finding and doing work you love. From paycheck to purpose, we'll walk you through the proven plan that has helped thousands of people find their dream job. And when you pre-order the book today, we'll also send you over $100 in free bonus tools like resume templates, guides, a video course on how to get hired and beat the competition. All of that is going to add value to you on this journey. So get your copy of From Paycheck to Purpose today at RamseySolutions.com. That's RamseySolutions.com. The book is From Paycheck to Purpose. 888-825-5225 is the number. Let's go to Azure in Dallas, Texas. How can we help? Hi, it's wonderful to talk to you. Thank you. you um, I I have a small counseling practice up in North Texas, and I am looking to relocate to East Texas mm -hmm. in about a year and a half. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to transfer it. Do I sell it and re and just restart or move it down there? Yeah, that's uh, that's a very interesting question. My question is, is have you looked into uh, what the details could look like if you were to sell the practice? Meaning, uh, is there any interest? Uh, who would you approach to see if there is interest? Where are you on that option? Sure. So I have two um, two other therapists that have contracted with me. They work underneath me. And one of them is a good possibility of possibly wanting to purchase it. Um, and she's, she's up and coming and she's dynamite. So she would be a good option. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that she would definitely be able to do it in a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and so when you talk about a counseling practice, I mean, are you doing much um, I don't want to call it telecounseling, but I mean, are you doing much Zoom stuff or is now everything kind of resumed back to in-person for you? I do a lot of both, actually. Um, and it, it's, it's been a really good option. And having the Zoom option has been a really great deal for my clients. Um, and I probably care about 20% of my clients online yeah. and the other the other um, 80% are in-person. Yeah. I'm going to throw another option at you. I'm sure you've thought of it, but I just am curious. Why wouldn't you, if you're just simply moving from one part of Texas to the other, 
and you already are doing 20% of your counseling online, if you will, uh, why wouldn't you keep the practice uh, where it is and just open up another office where you are? I have considered that, and my, my concern is that I wouldn't have enough of a client base to, to get the revenue that I need to, to maintain and to pay for another office space. Um, if, if that makes sense, like in the interim until I build up another, another client base in the new location, would it be enough? But yes, and I have, I have thought about, you know, continuing with some of my current clients online. I just know that, um, the majority of them don't want to do online and they probably would fall off if I, you know, if I moved. Okay. And I totally, and I get that. Yeah. But see, here's the issue. When you're selling a counseling business, Mm -hmm. what are you really selling? You know, you, I'm, I'm guessing you don't own your building. Is that fair? That's true. I rent office space. Yeah. So what are you selling in your mind? I want you to I, answer that. So I incorporated, I have a PLLC and I have the, I have software that is, is set up specifically for this practice. Okay. People know that, know where it is and they're familiar with the, with the name of the practice, but it's, it's, primarily north texas nobody in east texas has ever heard of me right exactly so my point is is if you move to a different part of texas and only 20 percent of your clients want to continue to do online that means 80 percent of your clientele has to choose are they going to keep coming to this practice even though they're not seeing you they're not going to have to choose to see the other two Mm -hmm. counselors correct that's correct yeah so i guess my point is you've got a challenge in that the person who's interested in buying it isn't going to be able to buy it when you want to move And so I think in this situation, I would probably, if you can't get somebody else to buy that software and then, uh, I mean, what else are they buying? I just think it's a hard purchase to sell. I think it's a hard sell. And so I think I would just wrap it up and, uh, and I would move on. That's what I would do. But if you could sell it, great, sell it. But I think that's going to be difficult. So I think that you may just end up having to shut it down and then reopen where you move. That makes good sense. I appreciate the insight. Yeah, I do. you bet. You bet. Thanks for the call. And, you know, George, it's very interesting in this world we live in now, you know, because of the quality of video conferencing, um, you know, doctors were doing telemedicine that way. Certainly, I think a, a counseling is a very intimate setting, um, but it is it is possible to do that kind of work now. Yeah, that way, if you can do it, if you can get clients to do it. So. I like the idea of her not letting go of this quite yet and yeah. starting small in her new area yeah. and starting to build that up over time. Yeah. And maybe by then there's a buyer or yeah. one of her counselors are able to purchase it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go to Mitchell now in Chattanooga, Tennessee, not too far from us here in the Nashville area. Mitchell, how can we help? Hey, thanks for taking my call. So um, a few months back, I used Tense Principles and got a new career and hey. that got me out of debt. Oh, I like so, hearing there that. There we go. Yeah, so now I can actually start um, contributing to the company match 401k since I'm out of baby step three, and they have a 6% match. So my question is, with Dave's 15% going into retirement, would I do 6% match and then 9% outside of that, or 6% there and then 15% outside of that? That's a great question. And in these instances, when you've got a company match, we look at that as icing on the cake. So I still want you investing 15% of your income into that 401k. And if there's a Roth option, that's even better. Uh, And then take that 6% match as a bonus. But no, it's not going to be a 6 and a 9 on your part. I want you to invest still the full 15%. Your job could change. Your life could change. The company numbers could change. The benefits could change. But I want you consistently investing 15%. Okay, and would I do the 15% in the company match on top of the six, or would I go through an ELP and just do it separately from the company match? No, they, they have a 401k, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, so what you want to do there is you'd go up to the match, that's 6%. Then you can open up a Roth IRA if you don't have one already, and you can work with a SmartVestor Pro, like you mentioned there, to uh, get that open. And you want to max that out. Uh, the, the limit is 6000 for most people this year. And then you go back to the 401k, uh, and you can dump money into there. And if it's that's if it's not a Roth option. I assume it's there okay. is no Roth option there? No, it's it's the uh, target date option as far as I know. It's the traditional 401k. Okay. If it's traditional, then that's what you do is go to the Roth, then back to the 401k, and finish out your 15%. 
Awesome. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. Uh, what a success story. I love it. Guys got him a new career. But, but by the way, that's the bigger shovel. Yeah. The, right there. If, if if we can help at Ramsey Solutions – uh, through through the Ken Coleman show and, and the resources we've created to get that bigger shovel, uh, let's go because that's an example. Mitchell got a better gig, got promoted, and got out of debt, and now he's calling you for investing questions. I mean, this is what it's about. This, right is, the, here. this is the sweet spot when it comes to what we do here, Ken. Is when you can intertwine the career side, the purpose side, with the money side, and you realize they actually work hand in hand. They do. I mean, have you ever heard a debt-free scream? I've not. Have you ever heard one where they didn't make at least some more money? I mean, it just some. Not many times. Memory. It's substantial where they make more money. Yeah. So making more money is a big part of getting out of debt. George and I will take those calls. I hey, love to hear it. I want to thank our producer James Childs, our associate producer and call screener Kelly Daniel. I want to thank you, George. Thanks for hanging with me. We want to thank you, America, for listening because we do it for you. This is your show. It is The Ramsey Show. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, and it's where America hangs out. To have a conversation about your life, your money, your work, I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Okay, so George, I got to get you to weigh in Okay. on something I saw in the news. I don't weigh much, but I'll try. <laughs> well you played. Like that? That's well played, sir. Okay, so here's the headline. I believe this is Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Uh, millennials team up to fulfill the dream of home ownership. Burdened by debt and facing soaring home prices, first-time home buyers are pooling their finances with partners, friends, or roommates. What? George. This is frightening. Say it isn't so. It is so. Wall Street Journal is pretty reputable. Yes. And here's the thing. It says the number of co-buyers with different last names increased by 771% between 2014 and 2021. So this isn't just a 2021 phenomenon. It's this just is, been This climbing. has been kind of happening. And what's happening is uh, millennials are strapped with student loan payments and all kinds of other payments, and they can't afford home ownership. And they're going to inflation, and I live in a high cost of living area. And so what do you do, Ken? You call up your buddy and say, hey, rent is real expensive. What if we went in on this and we became homeowners together? Okay, now let's talk about the nuances there. It's not a it's not a, a spousal situation where you both have the same last name. No. And as we teach shared assets and all that stuff, shared bank accounts, these are two completely different individuals. So uh, two of my favorite fake names to use in these scenarios is Bob and Larry. So let's say Bob. Sound which, like people by the way, who would do this. No millennials on the planet are named Bob and Larry. Parents don't name their kids that anymore. They don't. Maybe Robert. Okay. So let's go with <laughs> let's go with Robert and. Uh, Randolph. Perfect. And Robert and Randolph are buddies, and they go, okay, well, let's go do this. And so they buy a house together. How, what's that look like? They're both on the loan? Yes. It's called a joint tenancy or tenancy in common. Okay. And so it's it happens, and it's just two buddies, friends. They don't have any marital no. uh, connection, and they just want to own a home. And so you can you legally, it's possible. It's not an illegal thing to do. It's totally fine to do, but- it's a very dangerous move. Why is it dangerous? Well, um, home ownership is a big deal. Yeah. And when you got your name on the title of that home, uh, and then you got to go, okay, well, who's going to hire the handyman? Who's going to handle the mortgage payments? Uh, what if one moves away? What if one gets married? 
And so what happens is uh, there can be a lot of hairy stuff in that relationship that goes down. Yeah, I mean, and what then if, you're stuck. I said, well, Robert, Robert meets a gal, falls in love. I want love. her to move in. You're getting moved out. Wait, 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 wait. It's wait, my wait. house too. I co-own the house. It's just an. And by the way, we're at the very top of the onion here. We haven't really peeled it. No. There's all kinds of problems here. Legal mess. Uh, relationship mess. I mean, it's just a mess. But like many things, it looks good on paper. And you go, well, financially, this is a, a great move when it comes down to the numbers. But when people see this through these rose-colored glasses and then life happens, it gets real messy. And I think we're going to see a lot of relationships hurt by this yeah. as we try to figure out all the nuances of home ownership with someone that you don't have yeah. a real connection with. So legally. the moral of the story is please don't fall prey to this supposed good idea this has just got all kinds of crazy risk attached to it but i mean wow extreme times it points back to uh, to what we're trying to do with this borrowed future documentary yeah. help people get rid of their student loans yeah. so that they can live the american dream yeah which buy is your own house yeah i love it home ownership all right let's get to the phones 888-825-5225 abby is joining us in san francisco california how can we help Hey, Ken. Hey, George. Uh, right. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, yeah, so this kind of based on the student loan thing, so like you guys were talking about. Um, so my partner took out loans to go to college, and her parents took out 175000 in parent-plus loans. Ooh. So if we get married, like combined, we'll be making a total of $240,000 a year. So I just wanted to preface by saying I don't have a problem combining finances, paying it fully off when we get married, even though it's parent-plus, I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, currently, her parents are on income-based repayment and are hoping for loan forgiveness in 10 years as her mom is a teacher. But like George already talked about everywhere, forgiveness chance is about like 2%. Mm-hmm. So like, what kind of conversations should I have about boundaries with my partner and her parents like before we get married? You are a wise man, Abi, for even having this level of maturity to go, I've got to have boundaries, I've got to have a hard conversation. And so is this a conversation that you and her need to have with her parents? Or is this, how do I have the conversation with her? Both, I guess. I, I just, I'm, I'm just lost as to how to have this conversation. Because her parents have made it clear that they want to hope for forgiveness in 10 years, but it's only 2% chance. So like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, you, you're not going to be able to convince the in-laws of much. That's a difficult thing to do to give them financial advice. I've tried that. It did not go well. So I'm telling you from experience. <laughs> what you can do is empower your wife and help her have this conversation with her parents to say, hey, listen, we, this, was, this was loans you took out for me, and we want to do an honorable thing and pay these off. We don't want you guys to have this on your shoulders and wait a decade as we grow into our adult life and still have these loans hanging around for the hope of forgiveness, which we've seen not moving at breakneck speeds, even with new legislation and new presidents. I just don't see a day where there, where it gets much better than this. And so I think you're doing the wise thing by having the conversation, but I think you need to have it with her and not go directly to the, the in-laws or future in-laws. So then if they want, they're, they're older, so they want to retire soon, I'm sure. So won't it come back down onto us later on anyway? Like, I'm just trying to understand. You're saying, what do you do? once you guys are married, what do you do then financially, if you want to pay them off? No, not that. Like, if, if, if our parents want to retire, right, they can't retire when they have this kind of loan where they have to pay income-based repayment plans. So, like, how would that affect us? Because it'll come back down to, onto us, will it not? No, I mean, it's her parents took this out. And so when what happens is when the student applies for a loan and can't get it, then it turns into the parent plus loan if the parent is willing to take it on solo. So normally a parent can co-sign for the loan, meaning, hey, you're both on the hook, and if, if Abby doesn't pay, then it goes to the parent. But in this case, the parent is fully on the hook. And so that's the scary part with these parent plus loans is the parents are trying to do the best thing for their kid and set them up, yeah. but then they can't retire. And so what happens is the kids then have to help the parents in retirement. And it really creates a bad, bad situation. So you guys have a fantastic income, and I think it's really honorable that you're wanting to pay these loans off even though they're not in her name. And so I think if she has that conversation, maybe you sit down with her if they're willing to have it together, and you say, hey, listen, here's what we want to do. Once we're married, we want to tackle her loans, and we really appreciate what you guys have done to allow her to go to school but we want to take these on and help get this thing out of our lives, and we don't want to wait a decade. Yeah. 
And, and again, I, I think that having her be the one that cast this vision because it's her parents yeah. and tied it into their retirement and the way they want to finish out. Not from the son-in-law. Yeah, stay out yeah. of it. The Parent PLUS loans, huge high interest rate. I don't want you waiting 10 years and then nothing no. happens. No. And run the numbers, show them the numbers yeah. uh, of how it's going to actually turn out. Good stuff, George. Thank you for the call, Avi. All right, don't move, folks. More of your calls right around the corner. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. show continues thrilled to have you with us i'm ken coleman joined by my colleague none other than george camel and we are taking your calls 888-825-5225 i gotta tell you something i've never told you before oh boy i really enjoy saying your last name wow that means a lot yeah camel thank you, thank you. by the way tell people how it's spelled if they're new to you it's with a k k-a-m-e-l <laughs> like the animal and i will say ken i do have a middle eastern background that's a shock to a lot of people based on my uh complexion <laughs> so <laughs> you said that i just came back from cabo after a week and oh you I'm, did i don't think i'm even one percent tanner did you soak in 75 sunscreen well it was about 100 degrees in full sun i didn't want to come back crispy you know okay i, I burn easily do you tan no so you have a very light complexion and that's yeah. just your deal and you're going with it that's just my deal it's fantastic hey uh if you aren't strapped with student loan payments Odds are you know someone who has millions are putting their lives on hold. They can't buy a house or have kids because they're stuck. Or even worse, they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the government to save them with student loan forgiveness, which, by the way, is a total joke. Our team has produced a new documentary called Borrowed Future, and it's out now. It uncovers the dark side of the student loan industry and exposes how the system is built to work against you. You'll see Dave Ramsey weigh in on the epic failure, uh, otherwise known as the Student Loan Program, along with featured interviews from industry insiders. We're coming at this crisis hard, folks. We're taking big swings at the student loan problem with the goal to arm parents and students across the country with the truth, which is you do not have to take out loans to get a college education. You can graduate debt-free and avoid the predatory student loan industry. Borrowed Future is available for streaming now. Go watch on Apple TV, Amazon Prime Video, Google Play, or go to the website borrowedfuture.com. That's borrowedfuture.com. You're excited about this because you so you kind of were involved in the precursor yes, with the podcast. the podcast. And a lot of the stories started there, and you'll hear some of that, but I'm just so passionate about this topic as we dug into it. Uh, this was two years ago, and we just did a bonus episode for the podcast. And uh, surprisingly, not much has changed in the student world, uh, the student loan world, Ken. In two years, forgiveness hasn't budged much. The legislation hasn't budged much. A few of the players in the game, yeah. like Navient, they're getting out. But it still doesn't give me a ton of hope. I no. still would say, stay away. Don't recommend. 100%, because I will tell you right now, I don't mind saying this. I think that whole forgiveness language and conversation is a carrot yeah. to get more people to jump in. Yep. Well, they're going to forgive it, so this is free money. And waiting 10 Watch years the documentary. for something? If you said, hey, you can have it, but you need to wait 10 years, tell that to an 18-year-old, 22-year-old, that's a lifetime. Yeah, it really is. That's a lifetime for me. My goodness. <sighs> no, thank I, you. I'm just not interested. No, no, no. 888 is the number. Let's go to Gainesville, Georgia. Incidentally, George, where I started my radio career. Look at that. WDUN was the uh, radio station where I started out. So I love Gainesville, Georgia. Ashton joins us there. Ashton, how can we help? 
Hey, uh, I just wanted to say, first and foremost, I'm a huge fan. I've been listening since I was in high school. Wow. Um, and I've been following uh, for the past five years because I graduated 2016. As uh been doing my Dave Ish plan, and uh, I have recently just come to realize that Dave Ish doesn't work, and it's all or nothing. And... Um, so with that, I have a huge question. I'm currently in baby step two, and I'm also cash flowing my way through school. No student loans or anything, but I do have just shy of twenty grand in debt um, with a household income of right under forty k. I want to say it's like thirty nine five is what right about what I bring in. What kind of debt is um, the twenty grand? So ten three of it is a car loan. And then the rest of it is just multiple credit cards kind of spread out between different credit cards. And my big question with that is, do I need to put a hold on school to finish baby step two? Or do I finish cash flowing my way through in this degree that I started as a, I'm not even sure if this is the field I want to go in or... Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure where to all go right, from so, here. All right, so let's press pause on the on the uh, money question and because I think this is going to tie in. If you're not entirely sure, I want to know what you, percentage you would put on it right now. Is it 50-50? Is it 80-20, 70-30? As to how sure you are that this degree you're in right now is not the direction you want to go. Hit me straight. As far as, as, far as it it's a business management degree that I'm working on right now. And as far as percentage wise and everything like that goes, I'm looking at like, I'm like 70, 30, 70, 30, um, not pursuing that direction. The 30% would be in the not the 70 is in the end. Uh, as far as pursuing. It's, so he's leaning towards a yes. Oh, you're okay. I'm, I, I confused myself here. You are leaning towards moving into business management type work. Correct. It's really just a, with how broad of an umbrella the degree is and everything like that, I'm not sure where specifically in there I want to go. I do have about a, about 14 months yeah. of management experience if shift leading counts. I, hey, Ashton, the, i got to tell you right now, I would press pause on cash flowing to school and I'd crush the debt because I'm going to tell you right now, uh, you don't need a degree to get into business management. You already said you got 14 months of experience leading. Um, you know, uh, you could go get a job, two jobs, increase your income, which gets you out of debt faster, and get in a situation where you're following somebody and there's an opportunity, there's a ladder there for you to step up into leadership. You don't need a degree to get into leadership. So I would press pause. There's just too much unknowns right now for you to be taking that valuable cash and cash flowing a super general degree. For sure. The only reason that I uh, that I have that experience, I've been working uh, in the food business for a while um, and everything, and I, uh, my fiancé and I welcomed our son into the world back in 2019, and I jumped up uh, – you jumped up the chain just a little bit, just uh, bring in a little extra money. But that jump forward put me in a bind on the family end. And you mean schedule wise? And it, felt like it, it felt like it drove a wedge into that and everything. And so it was like, it was like I was doing my calling, but in the wrong area. Okay, and great. I don't know quite where that area is. Okay, we're going to lock in. Be. We're going to lock in right here. Ashton, you just led to it. You felt like you were doing your calling, but in the wrong place. I like to call that you're doing the right thing in the wrong place. I'm guessing the hours in the food service industry and all that was just crushing the relationship. I get that uh, because you got a little one now. So is leading and managing people, that's what you love to do? That Yes. Okay. So uh, so hold on a second. Everything from hold on. Thing to, uh, hold on. I want you to focus on something very clearly. If you can lead people and manage people and develop people, help them win in the food industry, can you not do the same thing in other industries? Yes or no? For sure. 
For yeah. sure. I like that answer, George. Confident. All right, so, George, let's now – so here's the deal, Ashton. I'm going to turn you over to George. I want you to press pause on this degree right now. I'm not saying don't go back and finish it, but I'm saying you can move up professionally even now because you've got leadership experience. He's got twenty grand to pay off, George. Yeah, at this point, is your fiancé working? She is. She okay. brings in about 1400 a month. 1400 a month, and that's on top of the forty that you're bringing in a year? Correct. Okay. Well, if either of you can get a second job, I want to tackle this thing. If you're going to pause school, then we need to go really hard at this debt. If you're going to continue school, I'd say, all right, well, continue through school, cash flow that, and then tackle this debt as soon as you graduate. But if we're pausing school, we've got to get, got to get rid of this debt. I mean, this is half of your income tied up in credit cards and car loans. Maybe see how much the car is worth. Yeah. You can drive a beater for a while and get this debt uh, payoff cut in half. Yeah. I'm all for that. And here's the deal. They're going to knock out the 20 grand pretty quick. School will still be there, okay? But this is the greatest priority, and I think it's going to put some attention on how I can get where I want to get minus the degree and leading people. Well, you don't have to have a degree to lead people. Come on, get after it, young man. Your future is waiting for you. Don't move. He is George Campbell. I'm Ken Coleman. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. show continues. I'm Kid Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Campbell, and we're taking your calls this hour, 888 825 How many of you out there want to get a bigger shovel so you can fast forward the process of getting out of debt? We can help with that. That is a, a particular area of focus for me. George and I will team up on those. Uh, if you're feeling like, hey, I, I'm just not doing work that I enjoy at all. Uh, we're taking those calls. Of course, that's what I do on the Ken Coleman Show. And then George is going to answer your money questions. He's ready to go, as always. And um, we love doing this. We are here because we really enjoy coaching you up. So let's go. 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. And in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, I see Jason and Stacy, yep. how are you? Good. How are you? You guys are here to do a debt-free scream. Yes, we sir. are. I love it. Where are you guys from? Boonville, Indiana. Okay. Very nice. All right. Tell us. Give us the numbers. How much did you pay off? We paid off sixty-eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars. How long? About three years and five months. Three years, five months. And what was your range of income? Ninety-eight thousand to about one ten. Ninety-eight to one ten. What do you guys do? I'm a serviceman for water utility. Okay, great. All and right. I'm a third grade public school teacher. Oh, okay. Very nice. But you have to have a lot of energy, don't you, to keep up with yes, third graders? For sure. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so what kind of debt was the 68000 We were super normal. Mm-hmm. We had credit cards, student loans, truck payment, car payment, 401k loan, medical bills, just a little bit of everything. I think so. George, did she leave anything out? That was like the potpourri of debt right there. <laughs> Very <laughs> impressive. That is awesome. I love it. So what happened three years ago where you guys said, no, nope, not doing this anymore. We're getting debt free. Well, I had had a really long day at school one day, and I needed to stop at Target and get some things for school the next day for a science experiment. And I just blindly grabbed some things, and I went through the checkout, and my debit card was declined. Oh, no. And I wasn't even mad. Of course, I didn't think it was my fault. I thought there's something wrong with this machine. Mm-hmm. And I just used my credit card and went to my car, and I thought, you know, I'm going to pull up our accounts just to be sure that everything's fine. And all I saw was red, like everything was negative. He had no clue. I had no clue. And what really just got me was that we were in a normal time. We hadn't had any extra expenses or anything come up and I just had no clue and I thought we are too far along in our career and we work way too hard for us to have no money where is all of our money going and so I just said we have got to do something different wow 
Yep. So, Jason, what did she say to you, and how did you respond? <laughs> I don't even remember what it was. But, uh, you know, it was basically, we have no money. Yeah. And Were you we surprised? Do something. Yes. Yeah. And then, and so at what point uh, do you introduce the Financial Peace University, the Ramsey Solution stuff? I mean, what was the, was it FPU? Was it the total money makeover? What, what, what was the, uh, the starting point? Well, what's funny is I owned the Total Money Makeover, but I had never read it. Uh, I've read it multiple times since. Yeah. Um, but a couple of our really good friends had the home study kit for FPU and had uh, offered it to us. And so when I got home that night, I texted her and I said, please bring me this kit. We are ready. And I we started the next night. Yep. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading by the body language here, Jason, that you were all in. You weren't pushing back. You were like, oh, oh no. Yeah. yeah. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it. That's amazing. What's that? What's that feel like? Each of you comment on that when when each of the spouse you realize, hey, we're not fighting against each other on this. We're we're joining arms here. Oh, that's a great feeling. You yeah, know, it made all the difference really because I was I was so upset with myself, and I feel like he easily could have been upset with me for for having this hole that he really didn't even know about. Um, but he definitely showed a lot of grace, and he he kind of owned his part of you know he kind of never paid attention to our finances. And so when I came to him and I said I've been doing this on my own for a really long time, but obviously I'm not very good at it, and we need to do this together. And and he agreed, and he said wow. you're right. So. You, w you guys went from problem unaware. You didn't even know you were broke to solution focus real quick. You went zero to 60. Three years, five months ago, what made you guys just go, all right, game on, nothing's stopping us? Um, I think when we well, – people look at us and have, have told us before, you know, you don't really seem like the kind of people that are in debt. And, and it, we didn't think we yeah. were either. We're not fancy people, I mean, at all. And so – but when you list out your debt um, – one of my favorite podcasters says, you got to know where your fist is going to land when you're punching it in the face. And that's true. You, when you list out all your debt and we totaled $68,000, I mean, we were blown away. And so we knew we had to get serious. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Incredible. So what did you actually do? What were the tactical sacrifices you made to get rid of this debt in three years and five months? Basically nothing extra. Nothing. No you frills. Know, yeah. None at all. We did so much budgeting and um, I became really good at meal planning and freezer meal cooking and we we cut out all the fat all the subscriptions the pandemic helped you know nobody did anything we didn't right. go anywhere we both were very fortunate to have jobs that were very secure you know all through that time right. and so we just used that time to kind of to kind of keep us rolling forward and um we just locked arms and put our head down and said that. we're getting this done what kind of what kind of meals are we talking about did we have a lot of rice and beans or did you get a little bit uh, oh, more no. creative yeah we had a little bit of chicken and pork and <laughs> there we go with that rice he's, and he's beans no vegan. you know hey i mean that's the key is changing out the protein George. he's willing to sacrifice but he's not going vegan yeah, yeah. Right. Right. right i get right. meat and potatoes I yeah. Get it. yeah yeah that's, yeah that's a, that's a sturdy man over there he's <laughs> not gonna go vegan that's George. Incredible. Yeah. And you guys got a raise along the way what happened there with the increase well um as a teacher, I don't get many raises, right. but, you know, he does. And then I also just side hustled like crazy. Yep. Tutoring, summer school, I sell Avon, pet sitting, dog sitting, house wow. sitting. We just, anything wow. we could. What was the most lucrative side gig? Um, I think teaching summer school, actually. There's not a lot of things that teachers can do for their hourly rate, but mm. summer school is one of them. And so it's a lot of hard work. It's intense. It's a short amount of time. Um, but it was it was good money for for the work. So you gave up a summer. That's sacrifice. two summers actually. Two. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. God so, bless our teachers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you guys have done it. So what would you say is the key to making it through this journey? Well, just helping each other, being there and being willing to work together. I listen to that question asked a lot because I listen to the podcast all the time. <laughs> um, and I ag always agree with everything that everyone says. And I would add to that consistency. You know, it's not just mm -hmm. about um, budgeting or um, communication for one month or for three months or for six months. It's about the consistency for month after month, year after year. We still create a unique monthly written budget every single month. Yep. We just have a different relationship with money now and so it just takes that consistency and if we can do it 
anyone can do it. Yeah. We were Team yep. Tiny Shovel, and we did it. So awesome. anyone can do it. You did it. And uh, did you bring someone with you today? We did. Who we, do we have? We brought our son, Wyatt. He does not really want to come up on he stage. He doesn't have to. Yeah, he'll be 14 <laughs> next week. So. I, let, you just explained everything. Yes. I, yeah. I totally now get it. My kids don't even want to be seen in the same zip code with me, much right. less a stage. So I get that. Well, hey, real quick, before you do your screen, we want to give you two things. One, the copy of Dave's. Uh, latest book, The Legacy Journey. That's the next stage for you as you guys really build legacy. Um, and so we want to give that to you. And also a copy of The Total Money Makeover for you to gift to somebody else. So we want to give you that uh, as a gift and appreciation for sharing your story. All right, here we go. You guys ready to roll? Okay, we've got Jason and Stacy from Evansville, Indiana area. They paid off $68,000 in three years and five months making $98,000 to $110,000. Jason and Stacy, take it away. Let's hear your debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. We're, We're debt-free! Yes, you are. I like that. In perfect yes. unison. Very good phonetical, uh, you know, kind of strategy there, Jay. Teachers are great communicators. I they expect are. nothing less. They are. You know what I love about this particular story? Because, you know, obviously we have a lot of couples. We go, I love that, like, their story was they both realized at the same time, had no clue, but both also decided, come on, let's go. Yes. There wasn't any hanging on, any arguing. Any, it was like, no, let's go do it this. It tells me there was a healthy marriage there to start, which Very is Very nice. healthy and even healthier now. That is really awesome stuff. Wow. That's why we do what we do, George. I love it. Never gets old. No, it does not. Tell you what else doesn't get old. The show. The Ramsey Show. Don't move. We're coming right back. to the Ramsey Show, where we hope you get where you want to go in your money, in your work, in your relationships. We're helping you live the life that you want through practical steps. 888-825-5225 is the number. I'm Ken Coleman, and I'm joined this hour by my colleague, George Camel. We're thrilled that you have joined us. Blinds.com's uh blinds.com that was it was i don't know why i struggled to say that george 100 percent satisfaction guarantee means that even if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color which i would mismeasure george that, I'm that would, type too you you and me both I'm no chip gains yeah exactly so this is why blinds.com blinds.com rather is where you want to go they'll remake your blinds for free you get free samples free shipping and with the new promos they run every month you'll save even more make sure you use the promo code ramsey to get the best deal Today's question comes from Jessa in Michigan. I am a loan officer at a credit union, and I absolutely love my job. But I also am on the Dave Ramsey plan, and have, I have fell in love with teaching your concept to our members about getting out of debt. I feel like a hypocrite because basically my job involves me creating debt. Do you have any advice for us who are stuck in corporate America? I feel like I am not part of the solution to money issues, but have become part of the problem. What fields can I pursue so I can become a solution? Well, it sounds to me like uh, Jessa really enjoys the financial industry. Yeah. And so she's she's obviously, because she believes in, in what we teach at Ramsey Solution, there is a conflict there. Now, first we start with Jessa. You aren't part of the problem. You aren't a bad person. You are not doing anything that's unethical uh, or illegal. However, I understand that the values disconnect. So if you love finances the planning, the strategy, the numbers, and all that kind of stuff, and you want to help people win financially that doesn't involve debt, I'm looking at uh, uh, one of our smart investor pros. You know you know our system. I really want you to, to reach out to somebody uh, in our in your area that's a smart investor pro and go, hey, Ken Coleman, I was listening to Ramsey show. They read my thing. and told me to call you guys. I, I think about moving into your side of things because I want to help people win with money, not get 
weighed down with money. And I think coffee, lunch, a phone call uh, to learn a little bit more about the investment side of things, financial planning, certainly financial coaching is an option. Uh, working for an organization that um, has good products and services that better people's lives, and maybe you work in the finance side of that company. What I'm trying to say here is there's a whole lot of opportunities for you. You don't have to feel as though you are painted in the credit union corner. Yeah. You can do a lot of what you like to do in a lot of different places. And she's saying she's a loan officer and she loves her job. And if you do that, I mean, we have our friends at Churchill Mortgage. They're helping people get mortgages the right way. That's right. So I think it's a great opportunity if you work for, you, maybe you are a mortgage loan officer, you help people understand the right way to get into a house that isn't going to bury them. And yeah. so you go, hey, I'd, I want you to do this. There's a great way to do this. Here's the kind of down payment. Here's what kind of mortgage loan I would steer you to, and here's why. To where she can actually help people That's right. do it the Ramsey way and do it uh, financially. That's sound. a very good point, George. She may be able to stay in the credit union if it's a perspective change. Don't push somebody to a bad product but if you're getting pressure to push to a bad product then if that's... she's making car loans all day i get it yeah but if you want if you love the loan industry i think a mortgages might be something that she could yeah. get into where yeah. she could really help people yeah and so. really guide people to do it the right way really good stuff there all right let's get back to the phones Triple eight eight two five five two two five. robert joins us in albuquerque new mexico robert how can we help how are you doing all well we're having a blast What's going on? <laughs> Every day is a good day. Um, I just had a question. I have, uh, you know, where I work now, I make good money. And me and my wife are, you know, pretty much debt. Well, not pretty much. We're debt free except for our mortgage. Okay. And uh, the problem is, is the company I'm working for basically, you know, got rid of all the people that started the company. And then now the new owner is wanting me because i'm outside sales wanting me to do like things that i don't agree with that to me you know gouge them gouge our customers okay. and i don't agree with it okay. so they got rid of everyone else and those people are starting a new company and they want me to go there well i'm leaving a six figure job to go there and then start over but i don't know if you know my wife thinks it's a you know, she doesn't know if it's a good idea or not. But morally, I can't, I just, I can't do it. Right. Well, so. I'm not into that. That's yeah. not, because I'm in construction, just to kind of give you a sure. little. Yeah. You know, well, fact, you're a yeah. good man, Robert. You're a good man. And um, you've got a decision before you one way or the other. So you and your wife, you got to sit down and go, okay, one way or the other, I can't keep doing this. I think the million-dollar question for you, Robert, is how much longer can you do it? Are you at a point where you feel like each day that you stay here and you're asked to do something you don't agree with, it's like, could you last 30 days doing this? I don't think the answer is yes, but I want to know what you. how long can you last until you find something else to step into if we don't take this startup opportunity? Oh, I want to leave it today. Can you do that financially? I just can't do it. I, I, I have a lot of regular customers that, you know, I'm charging them double what I did before. Right. And it's just not right. I mean, okay, so. They're just making more money. Right. So, but financially, you can't walk today. Did I hear you say that? Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, my wife makes good money, too. So I think you could. You don't so, have any debt. I mean, you don't have any debt. And we have six months of our reserve. Yeah, well, you know, I don't want you to. I don't want you to cheap. necessarily use that. My question is, can you live off of your wife's salary for thirty days, sixty days? Probably not. Okay, so here's the deal: you're gonna have to. You, you got to be a big boy. You got to be a grown up here. And so, I think it comes down to doing your homework and finding out what would you make. Is it straight commission if you go with the startup? All these people you used to work with. Yes. Okay. So. One way or the other, it's like you can't be without pay for 30 days. Uh, well, for 60. I think you could do 30 is what it sounds like to me. So you're going to have to bite your lip, and you're not doing anything unethical. You may not like the way it feels, but until you can find something to replace what you're doing, and you should be able to, as good of a salesman as you are, you should be able to do it. Or the other question is, is how quickly talk to these guys that want you. Go, hey, let's be realistic, guys. I, I, I can't go 60 days without making money. How quickly am I going to be able to get up and running and actually sell some stuff? 
Have you had that conversation? We've had that conversation, but at the same time, I've already got, you know, at least 10 to 15 customers that said, They'll go wherever I go. Oh, well, you didn't tell me that. That's uh, different. Th- th- okay. I know. That's a, that, I'm getting into it. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not getting on you. I'm just going, that's a, that's different information. Um, I'd go tomorrow. Right. If the 10 to 15 are going to follow you, I'd go tomorrow because now you can sleep it well at night. You can live with yourself, and that's more than enough customers to get you going. Right? Oh, I, absolutely, yes. Well, then it's a no-brainer. It's uh, just my wife is not all for it. Well, and but you. How do you convince? Is it because of the income to go dip from a six-figure salary to, you know? You don't think you can get back to six figures in no time? I think so. Well, you got to show her that, Robert. This this is a safety issue. Your wife doesn't feel safe. You got to show her how. I know. I know, but listen. But the the good that's good news and bad news. Bad news is your wife doesn't feel safe. The good news is all you have to address is her safety. So you got to sit down with her with a good old-fashioned piece of paper and pencil and go, with the 10 to 15 going with me over here, this is where I'm realistically going to be in the first three to six months. It's going to pinch us maybe a little bit, but we're in no way we're no way near uh, any kind of danger. And you show her how long it's going to take to get where it's going, and you have a conversation where she goes, oh, okay, I feel safe. And a reminder, we've got six months in our emergency fund. Yeah. We have no consumer debt. You're positioned. We can do this. Absolutely can do this. Uh, yeah, I would do that tomorrow. Like I'd do it today. End of business. If I talk to my wife first, I want the wife to feel safe. Sorry, smart I did, man. I did get a little excited How about that. How long have you been married, Ken? Twenty-three years, which is why I amended what I said there. Talk to the wife, then submit the resignation. That's the order of that. Hey, uh, good stuff, George. Thanks, fun man. Times. Always fun. I want to thank our producer James Childs and our associate producer and call screener Kelly Daniel. And we want to thank you, America. This is your show. It is The Ramsey Show. Hey, guys, this is James, senior producer for The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, head to theramseyshow.com. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life, your money, your work, your relationships. It's all on the table. We want to help you. And the way we do it is just good old-fashioned conversation, coaching you up, giving you some practical steps to take that you can do because it is up to you. And I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, uh, fellow Ramsey personality, George Camel with a K, by the way, K-A-M-E-L. Thank you for that, Ken. Yeah, can I know. just say, I always appreciate when you call me a colleague. It just feels, I feel very, I, my, my back straightens up. Yeah. I have better posture. You know why that is. <laughs> why is that? Because you're a millennial. Oh, and I'm yeah. an I'm an Xer, and I think colleague is a term that you are only vaguely familiar with. So when I say it, it has a little extra punch to it, although it just means coworker. It feels old timey in a good way. It is. I'm a little bit of an old soul. Kelly's looking at me like she's irritated. Should I should I retire, colleague? No. Oh boy. Oh, she's. Oh, you're irritated at George. Thank you very much. Okay, because I feel like colleague Don't, is not two Xers mad at a millennial. This is too <laughs> classic, guys. Come yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. And Kelly and I are almost like exactly the same age. I would have thought Kelly was like much almost, younger. What? Way good, younger. Nice move, George. Well played. I'm mostly just sir. scared of Kelly, so just trying to earn the brownie points where I can. As you should. All right, let's get to the phones. Hazard, Kentucky. Oh, that's cool. Josh is on the line and has. Well, I love saying this. And Hazard, Josh is there. Josh, how can we help? Yes, I'm actually currently in baby step two. Uh, me and my wife, we make around eighty thousand dollars a year. Right before I started the baby steps, we bought a uh, property which was adjoining a uh, 
development area, which was adventure tourism in my area, because we're really it's a rural area. Uh, long story short, uh, it took off very well. This and the county government has actually got a grant for their side of the adventure tourism for like 1.5 million, and they're making a lodge. And right now, like I said, I'm on baby step two. We're working the plan. Uh, we're just kind of uh, my first cabin I built. I ended up doing some rentals there. Uh, kind of want to see where I need to go if it should be right to build another cabin now or wait till we get finished. The bank is actually I spoke with them. They're open with doing another one, but I understand you know it's hard to get out of a uh, hole with a very small shovel at the same time if you're digging deeper. So, so you are taking out loans to build these cabins. Yes, it was before we started any type of baby steps or anything. And you're saying, hey, should I go build another cabin if it's going to mean taking out another loan? Yes, that's the only thing. I don't really want to go through with that, but at the same time, like I've turned away like 30 people the last month for bookings on my cabin. cabin yeah. So you're seeing the, the dollar signs going, man, i got to get another cabin ASAP. I can make some money. Yeah. How yeah. much debt do you have? Uh, minus my mortgage and the vacation rental, I've got about forty thousand. Forty in uh, consumer debt. Yeah, it's a couple cars and then a personal loan and one credit card. Okay, and what uh, do you have any business debt? Uh, yes, for the land, the property we bought in the cabin, it was uh, we owe about fifty fifty eight thousand, I think, on that. How much then are my you? My home, I owe about eighty. How much are you clearing, Josh, on this one cabin rental that's just hot, hot, hot? Um, I'm clearing about thousand dollars a month on it, so yeah, that's not there. yeah. But I mean, have, you haven't gotten into any repairs. That thousand dollars a month—that's not a whole lot when you think about upkeep and stuff like that. That's correct? twelve grand a year, so it's not a—it's not a money-making scheme. Yeah. So the answer is no, you're not going to go into debt for another one. You're not even making enough money to get that excited. I mean, I understand it's kind of nice to see it all booking up and stuff like that, but the reality is you're clearing right now. And, I, and when I ask you clearing, I mean, are you working in expenses to that, like upkeep and repairs? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but even yeah. to that, twelve grand a year, I mean. Uh, and you've got almost $100,000 in debt from your consumer debt plus the business debt, and this is outside of the rental, correct? In yeah, your home? Yes, that. Yes. Okay. Well, that just my just the consumer debt, which I'm not adding in. You know, the home and the business debt yeah. about forty thousand. Yeah. yeah, it's just I think you're you're doing a lot of different things right now, and I I think it's going to, if it's not already adding stress to your life, which I assume you wouldn't be calling in if it wasn't creating some level of anxiety. Going all right, we're, we've got a lot of things going on here. So what I would recommend you do uh, the business debt. I mean, you signed your personal name on that debt, right? Yeah, well, yes, it was through the business when I bought it, but it's my personal name. You know, I'm the owner of the business. So anything that's not real estate, I would go ahead and put in baby step two in this debt snowball and list it out from smallest to largest. Do you have any cash right now, just straight up in the savings? Uh, just, just, yeah, just my emergency fund for my business, which is around $1,000, and then I have an emergency fund for my personal, like in baby step two, is $1,000. Okay, so you're in baby step two now. We're going to use the debt snowball. So I want, what I want you to do is list out all of your debts that aren't real estate and list them out from smallest to largest regardless of the interest rate. And I want you to start attacking that with a vengeance with every dollar you can get coming in. We're not buying anything. We're not swiping the credit card anymore. We're not buying cars. If you can sell some of those cars and uh, make a profit off of it, I would do that as well. Are they, are they in good shape? Could you get some money for those cars and clear some of this debt? Uh, it would be close. Uh, I might be able to. It'd be very, very close. I'd look into it right now because I'm seeing some crazy things with this car market where people are getting uh, way over the, the value that would have been you know, 18 months ago. So if that can speed up this journey for you, I want you to clear this $100,000 of debt and uh, be in a really good spot for you to eventually start building more cabins with cash. All right. And that's kind of the way I felt too, but yep. it felt good to hear it from somebody yeah. else. Yeah, thanks for the call, Josh. And here's the deal. You can knock this out. And once you knock this personal debt out, knock that cabin out, now all of a sudden uh, you, you've got some real uh, wealth-building opportunity here and and, and then, then expand that business because clearly it's working. And so that's a positive asset in the sense that, okay, we've got something to build off of. But don't don't take the temptation to take on more debt. Yeah. You know, that's a good move. But he's got he's got some good things going on, but 
Again, when I hear credit cards and the cars and personal loans, it feels like things are out of whack right now. We've got to clean up the mess before we can focus on growing the business. Uh, George, I was going to ask you this. Um, are you sensing, because I know you look into consumer stuff as well, uh, are you sensing any trend here on, are we going to see used car cost kind of slow down? feels like they're pretty high, a premium right now. Is that going to change anytime soon? Are my, you reading anything? My prediction is in 2022, we're going to see things level out a little bit. We're not going to see the, this craziness where used cars are going for you know 30% more than they would have 18 months ago. As the supply chain starts to fix itself and we see more new cars in the market, the used cars will get a little less attractive. And so right now, if you've got car debt, now's the time to look into some of these sites like Vroom and Carvana, uh, CarMax, dealerships, even Facebook Marketplace. I've been hearing crazy stories of people listing their car on Facebook Marketplace and dealers from different states are contacting them and they're legit and they're saying, we'll give you way over uh, your offer. Oh, we'll, so we'll you're come. saying to go to a car dealer, which is traditionally an awful idea because they give you and, way less than yeah. the Kelly Blue Book. And listing on Facebook Marketplace and the dealer reaches out to you. So you're getting Kelly Blue Book value from car dealers? Oh yeah, way, even more. Oh. They're desperate out there. This, this is why. Crazy this times. This is why. I'm he a is nerd, the consumer's Ken. friend right I'm here. I'm a nerd. Good stuff. Hey, don't move. More of your calls coming up. He's George Campbell. I'm Ken Coleman, and this is The Ramsey Show. Life is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. Welcome back, America. You are joining the conversation here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel as we take your questions this hour. 888 825 The number to jump in is 888-825-5225. Now, of course, we take your calls, but we also get, you know, a show this large, a tremendous amount of social media questions. Um, and I should mention, if you want to follow George and I on the gram, as the kids call it, Instagram, do kids That's, call it I don't that? think kids call it that, but I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> I did that. I knew I was going to walk into that. Anytime you say, as the kids call it, just know it's not what they call well, it. Well, I, you know, I slipped into dad mode there, George, because I have three teenagers, and I do that. And recently the team got That's me fair. on TikTok. Oh, and, that's right. And I don't do anything over there. So this is not like go follow me over there because I, the team does it, and, you know, we're kind of, you know, dabbling into some content there you're not doing dance challenges don't well, we, get excited we, we had a post that went kind of nuts and i came home that day and i told my kids hey uh so dad's pretty big on the talk and dude they were so irritated with just like you are right now yeah that i called it the talk but it's not the gram either no it's instagram yeah at yeah. george camel at george camel with a k and at ken coleman yeah yeah. Also with a K. <laughs> with a K Coleman is, with a C. Thank you, George. You, you just confused everybody. Yeah, we got a lot of a lot, Ramsey has a lot of I don't have many fans, but the Ramsey brand We get a lot of social media questions and we love them. And you've got a very interesting one right now. Yes, we've got a great question from Joel on Facebook, and here's what Joel asked. I got hit in the T-Mobile data breach earlier this year, and I keep getting weird voicemails and texts from random companies. Should I be worried about ID theft? That's a great question. Ken, if you didn't hear about this, back in August, T-Mobile had a data breach that affected almost 50 million customers. I think I, mem I think I remember seeing a headline. Yeah, so this is scary stuff. A lot of data breaches out there. At some point in your life, you're going to be a part of a data breach. I mean, a lot of major wow, companies Wow, that's very scary. Really? Yeah, but here's the thing. Let me explain to you, and this will answer Joel's question. A data breach is different from identity theft. So a data breach just means that your information was exposed. So there was a security breach, and your personal confidential information is out there. Someone may have access to maybe your birthday, your email address, maybe your social security number, your street address, things like that. 
but it doesn't turn into identity theft until someone actually uses that private information uh, for their financial gain. And I okay. experienced identity theft. Did you? I had uh, someone opened up an AT&T account, a Verizon account, under my name using my Nashville address, but they did it in Boston with my social security number and racked what? up $1,700 on when both. When was this? This was uh, back in 2014. Was it, uh, did they at least uh, re, uh, when they stole your identity, were they like a six foot five muscular I was hoping. Person? I don't know if they ever found the person, but oh. here's the okay. thing. Uh, it was very scary because you go, this person has my very personal information. They used it against me yeah. uh, to create this debt in my name. That's crazy. Obviously, I didn't have to pay it, but they racked up $1,700 on both accounts. Uh, and the good news is I was working at Ramsey at the time. I had ID theft protection through Xander. Yep. Dave gets that for all the employees. But here's some things that Joel can do because I think it's a, it's a legitimate worry to have. I don't want you to get paranoid about identity theft. You can sleep sleep easy at night, but here's some things that you can do. Number one is check your credit report. What's really interesting right now is the bureaus are offering free weekly reports through April 20th, 2022. Normally, you can access them once a year for free. Right now, they're doing it weekly uh, through 2022, April 20th, uh, 2022, thanks to COVID. So that's one thing you can do. Check for any suspicious activity there. Another thing you can do, and I did this after identity theft, is freeze your credit. So call up, uh, contact the three credit bureaus, and make sure you freeze your credit. That's Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. What that means is no one's going to be able to open up an account yeah. because it's frozen. You might have to lift it temporarily. Right temporarily if you're you know applying for an apartment and there's a hard inquiry yeah. if you need to do a check like that another thing you can do beef up your password game right most of us we don't we can't remember our passwords we use the same one on everything oops and that's a dangerous move is it because if they get your your password for your T-Mobile account that might be the same one for your email and now they access a whole web of things and so oh, make boy. sure you're using strong passwords uh, use a password manager James Childs our producer loves a good password manager that's oh, another thing you can do. He does. He big, strikes me as a big somebody. privacy nerd. Yeah. Another yeah. thing. Have you heard of this? Two-factor authentication. Uh, is that the deal where don't uh, guess? This is you, you have to get a cell phone number. <laughs> well, yeah. So you can do different oh, things. See, smarty pants. I actually knew a little it's where something. where you've got a password, yeah. but you also have to verify it through maybe a text message That's or what I was opening about. up a smartphone app or yeah. a physical security key. So those are all great things. But the number one thing I tell you to do to sleep easy is just get identity theft protection. It's super cheap for an individual. Yeah. It's you know it's the cost of a latte, and for a family, it's the cost of a pizza yeah. per month to stay protected. And what this does, this I didn't, I didn't know this. Xander does all the work for me. They do. And so they're 24-7, they're 365 support, yeah. and they will cover up to a million dollars for stolen funds and expenses. Yeah. And there's proactive monitor, monitoring and alerts. So I love this. I sleep easy at night now. I haven't had identity theft since. And I do these other things. You yeah. know, I freeze my credit. I make sure my passwords are strong, and I use two-factor authentication so that in case of a breach, it doesn't create identity theft. Yeah, I got to tell you, George, I feel much better because when you started off on this whole deal about data breach, I thought somebody was going to break into the studio because some guys in some black suits and, you know, the aviator glasses. It sounds very, very scary. But I do recall that each month, you know I'm not a fan of email. I but know. I do get an email from Xander, and, and then I click on it, and it tells me. And, and they'll and, let you know, know, hey, your email yeah. was yeah. compromised. Um, go change your password here. And I go, oh, thank you, Xander. I would have had no idea. Yeah, yeah. So it, there's, it's a great feature, and there's a lot of things you can do to protect yourself. Don't freak out, Joel, uh, but make sure that you're doing these things. Yeah. Good stuff. Good question. Thanks, George. Good stuff there. Megan is up now in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Megan, how can we help? Hi, I am so honored to talk to you guys. Well, thank um, you. What's going on? <laughs> All right, so my husband has been employed for 20 years with the same company, longer than we've been married, actually. Um, and his employer is implementing a surcharge on insurance costs for those who are not receiving the COVID shot, mm -hmm. um, which we definitely do not want. Yeah. And so we're trying to figure out, we, we don't know how much the surcharge is going to be. Um, and we're just looking for some guidance as to where to go from here, if we should just kind of wait the boat or if he should maybe just start looking a little bit to see what else is out there in case it gets, you sure. know. Let me ask you this. If this wasn't coming down the pike, would he be thinking about moving on? No, he, he really likes what he does. Yeah. Um... I, this is, I, I'm going to try to not get involved in this emotionally and, and help you walk through this. Um, because on one hand, you guys don't want to get it. You don't want to get the shot. 
and uh, on the other hand, you don't want to, you know, get hit really hard and, and take on an expense like this. And he wasn't looking, wasn't thinking about looking prior to this. So this really puts you in a tough situation. But I think this comes down to to your priorities. And um, you know, I think at the end of the day, they need to tell you what the what the cost is going to be, and then you weigh the cost. Literally weigh the cost. Okay, uh, in order to stay in this job that he really enjoys. Uh, there's going to be an added monthly expense now that I'm getting hit with. Um, how long is that going to last? We don't know the answer to that. You know, is it going to be uh, forever? You know, who knows? I think you have to weigh that. Um, while you're weighing that and waiting for that information, I would be looking, though. I'll tell you that. Yeah, there's two pieces okay. of this. There, there's the ethical component of do I want to work for a place that has these values? And if overall he agrees with them ethically and he goes, all right, this is something I got to deal with. And uh, it basically, you know, turns into a $200 pay cut, right? If, if it's 10, 15 bucks a month. Now, if it's, I can't imagine it's anything large. I'm not going to charge I you $100 would, a I month. I would hope not. Uh, but then you weigh it and go, all right, am I willing to take this little pay cut uh, to stay at a job that I truly love? Yeah. And this is just an annoyance that I'm going to deal with as part of it. But if you're like, hey, I can't agree with them ethically anymore. I've got to leave. That's your decision that you have to make. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think this is tough. Um, and I got to tell you, now that I think about it, George, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not a hefty bump. Because I'm going to tell you what this amounts to. This is a penalty. And companies are saying, we think everybody should be vaccinated. And we're telling you that you need to. Because uh, I think Delta Airlines came out. They were the first, I think, major company for, for this kind of thing. It was like, hey, we're going to hit you with a with a premium uh, on your health care because of all the uh, the implications they're saying. Yeah. Uh, but I think it comes down to a penalty. And I don't know. It may not be. It may not be insignificant. It may be a significant number. And in that case, unfortunately, it turns into a budget line item. Your values and your money are driving this decision. And if you got to move on, you got to move on. Hey, don't move on because we've got more of your calls coming up. This is The Ramsey Show. Stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Welcome back, America. You are joining The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel, And we're here for you this hour. It is a free phone call, 888-825-5225. And, George, this is uh, it's our favorite part of the show, looking out there in the Ramsey Solutions lobby on the debt-free stage. I see Brandon and Michaela. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, where are you guys from? We're from Paducah, Kentucky. Paducah, Kentucky. All right. And uh, if you're on that stage, that means you're here for a debt-free screen. Yes, sir. Fantastic. How much debt did you pay off? We paid off 25500 and then we also had a baby in the middle of that. Whoa. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. How Thank old you. is the baby now? She's six months old. Six months. Are you sleeping? Actually, yeah. She sleeps really well. She sleeps. That really means you well. sleep. That's, That's right. fantastic. Okay. So $25,500. How long did it take? Ten months. Ten months, and what was the range of income? Uh, it started at a hundred thousand, and then it's up to one hundred fifteen. Oh, oh all, right. all right. Tell me about that. What 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 did we do to get there? Uh, well, actually, it was just a raise through my work. Good. About mm, about halfway through this year. Great. So what do you do? I'm a manager at a HVAC supply house. Nice. And uh, Michaela? I work at a CPA office. Oh, nice. Okay, fantastic. So great income here. Um, and uh, what kind of debt was the twenty five thousand five hundred? Um, everything. It was uh, car loans, student loans, credit card. Uh, we financed some 
flooring, some carpet, everything, really. Okay. All right. Are you happy with the flooring choice? I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's paid for now. It, so well, that's right. It's, it's paid for, so I hope you're happy. It probably feels a little bit better Wonderful. to walk on. Wonderful. Yeah, I thought that might be the case. Okay. Uh, so 10 months ago. Uh, did you know about Ramsey Solutions, financial peace, the total money makeover? What what led you to start this journey? You, you can take it. Okay. Uh, so I had actually known about Dave Ramsey for a while. Um, I had I had done FPU probably two or three times. Okay. And I knew how it worked. I just never did it. Never really, I guess, was motivated to do it. And I guess it was towards the end of December of last year. We were like, okay, we're really going to do this. So we... Uh, downloaded every dollar app and we started doing it for real and then we got pregnant yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah how did pregnant. that how did that what because you'd already started it then you find out you're pregnant well did that intensify it we found out we we're pregnant in what, august and oh, then we okay. started in january oh i'm with you i yeah, got you yeah do you think that may have been the domino that i think it? yeah i think it was definitely a, a big factor yeah just, just to be prepared for when she was here yeah, so, yeah. sure so what were the things you guys did? Because that's a pretty big chunk, even of your income, in 10 months to pay off. Were there some sacrifices? Did you sell anything, get extra jobs? Uh, well, I mean, we sacrificed eating out, which we love to do. Yeah, come you on. Know. Um, we did sell an older vehicle that we had for, what was it, 5000 But everything else was just hard at it. Just get wow. after it. Just getting yeah. after what it, was, yeah. what was uh, What was maybe one of the most difficult things to kind of say – no to or maybe one of the most difficult things to do in the middle of this journey you want to answer that nope you can oh jeez you guys <laughs> oh, are geez. so polite i feel like <laughs> you guys need paddles not really so you guys can determine who's going next <laughs> i like that yeah um i would say the hardest thing was probably you know we had friends that like, hey you want to go do this you want to go do that we're going to yeah. go here it's like no man we can't do that yeah Wow. Yeah, that's I, it. I get that. So, did you have cheerleaders? Were they cheering you on, or do they think you were weirdos for doing this thing? Weirdos. Crazy. Yeah, weirdos. Uh, wow. <laughs> actually, our biggest cheerleader was my younger brother, which we kind of got into this, and we gave him our older what book was it? Financial Peace. Mm -hmm. Oh, Total Money Makeover. I'm sorry. Okay. And he was kind of hesitant at first, and he got really into it, and he was cheering for us the whole time. So that's and now awesome. he's doing it. So that's incredible. I love that. What do you? What would you tell people is the key to winning this? Waking up every day and making the decision of I'm going to choose to be debt free. I'm going to choose to not live like I did before. Yeah. And consistency, consistency, consistency. Yep. Oh, that's and a, communication. That's, that's a theme 100%. right here. Consistency and communication. I love that. Wake up every day yep. and choose to be debt free. It's a daily decision. You yep. can't just decide once and then keep living your life the way you were living. You've got yep. to make some changes, change some habits. Make some sacrifices like you guys did. Absolutely incredible. So how does it feel now? Wonderful. Amazing. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, you could see it. So how does it change? You're a young couple. How has it changed your outlook on the future now on the other side of this? You're now debt-free. What's it done for your vision for the things you're dreaming about? I mean, you know, it's it's kind of nice to wake up in the morning and not, not, you know, on Fridays when we get paid, it's like, okay, we get to keep this. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's going everywhere else. And now that we've got a little girl that, you know, she gets to grow up, and we get to race her in the yeah. way that we've now been taught. And uh, it's just endless opportunities, really. Yeah. And now you can eat out again. What's your What's the spot? Yeah, like that's what I want to know. Free. Where'd you go? What was the meal? We haven't had it yet. Yeah, yeah we're <laughs> oh planning on doing goodness. that this weekend. Oh, oh this okay. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, so really, seriously, you've not been out to eat in in ten months. Not no, not really. Wow. Are you guys gonna stay over? Or are you going back to Paducah? We're here for the weekend, so oh, we're eat as much as we can. George, I feel like during the break you should go give him some suggestions. <laughs> oh, you're, I'm Mr. To. you're Mr. You're <laughs> Mr. Uh, Millennial No Kids. This is my Super Bowl. Nashville eateries, George. <laughs> Please yeah. do. Yeah. They haven't Please. been inside of a restaurant for ten years, ten months, Ken. <laughs> I it gotta feel tell you, like ten years. Like George is so fired up, he's gonna give you so many great suggestions. I might leave now. Please yeah. do. <laughs> now we gotta get to the screen first. That's the best part. Well, absolutely. So, uh, wow, wow, wow! What a great story. Well, hey, a couple things before we get to the screen. Uh, we want to give you a copy of Dave Ramsey's The Legacy Journey because this really is now the next step for you guys. Uh, truly building a legacy, not with just that beautiful little princess, but in everything you do, uh, who you give to, and how you spend that money. Uh, so we want to give that to you. And then I love that you gave a, a total money makeover to your brother because we're going to give you a brand new copy uh, to give to somebody else. And so that is our gift, and we want to give that to you. So that is just really good stuff. You guys are a great couple. Thank you. Thank you. you guys are Thank heroes. You. And uh, 
This is why we do what we do. We're ready to celebrate. You guys ready to go? Ready. Yes. Ready to go. Okay, here we go. Brandon and Michaela from Paducah, Kentucky. They paid off $25,500 in 10 months. Make it 100000 up to $115,000. Brandon, Michaela, take it away. Ready? Do your debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free! Debt yes! yes! There it is. That's how it's done. Huh? How about that couple? Look at that. I, her face is changed. Her, just giant smile. Plastered on the face. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, they, they've done their debt-free scream. I'm not sure what is leading to the big smiles the most. Is it they're debt-free? Uh, because they've been debt-free for, obviously, a little bit to get here. Or is it the excitement about the restaurant suggestions you're going to give it's them? It's the upcoming meal, Ken. Nashville's <laughs> got a lot of great food. They're in the right place, and they're in the right hands. But, you know, we're having fun with that, but... That seems like a little sacrifice, but it's not. Dangling that little carrot is really powerful to go, hey, what do we want to do once we're debt-free? What kind of things do we want to do again or for the first time? And it's one of those things where you go, we don't have to think about it. It's in the budget. We're going to pay cash for it. We're going to have a great time. Yeah. But Instead also, of wondering, yeah. how, do we have the money? Am I going to put this on the credit card? Yeah. But speak to this, George. You coach people on this. I mean, you start – racking up things like i'm not going to go out to eat we're going to you know do this this and this all those things together add up to where you can pay off 25 grand in 10 months which is that's a lot of money in yeah. 10 months and what happens is you go we're going to make a temporary sacrifice for a long-term gain when you have that kind of mindset it yeah. changes everything most people go i'm just going to keep living this way for the next 20 years and i'll worry about it down the road they keep kicking the can down the road and one day they realize hopefully they're broke and they're yeah. miserable and they're living yeah. with anxiety and they can't reach their dreams and buy homes and yep. go on vacations. And it's all because of that. And so I love meeting couples like this who decide, and not only decide, but wake up every day yep. deciding that it doesn't have to be this way. And we're going to dangle this carrot, this goal in front of us of debt freedom and all the things that comes with that yep. so that we can power through and pay this off. I love it. All right, George, um, I want to know. You go 10 months without eating out. Where do you go? What kind of meal? Just tell me the meal. I think it's got to be a high-quality meat. I'm probably going ribeye. Okay. That's just me. Yeah. Uh, I maybe, asked you. Maybe a big old pork chop. Okay. What's your side? Uh, I'm going to go with mashed potatoes. Really? Maybe some asparagus. I'm a little shocked that uh, you chose mashed potatoes. It's creamy. It's buttery. <laughs> it's filling. Oh, I love it. I got to tell you, if I go 10 months without a meal, I'm going to have to work in some amazing seafood, George. I'm maybe with you on a that. surf and turf. You know, a little bit of maybe a filet and a giant lobster. This tail. is helping my decisions for this couple. There it is, folks. This is what you come here for. Hey, don't move. It's not done yet. More of your calls, more breakthrough coming up. This is The Ramsey Show. show continues. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel. So thrilled that you've joined us today. 888-825-5225 as we talk about your life. Our scripture of the day is Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Today's quote comes from John Maxwell. The secret of your success is determined by your daily agenda. Good stuff there. Amarillo, Texas is where we go now, and Chancellor joins us on the line there. Chancellor, how can we help? Hey, yes, sir. Thanks, guys, for taking my phone call. You bet. Hey, hey. Uh, so, <laughs> kind of crazy here. Uh, I uh, am in a po at a point now to where we are – my wife and I were completely out of debt and uh, we've been doing the, we did the baby steps and we got gazelle intense and seems as if the, as if the uh, gazelle intensity has <laughs> kind of taken over our lives. Um, 
we don't really know where to go from here. And it's not a bad situation by any means. You know, we have a nice savings account, 15% going to our retirement. And uh, we got our kids' college funds on the way. We're building them. However, we still have an influx of money, and we don't know what to do now. So you've got leftover cash after four and five, and you're wondering, what do we do with it? Yes, sir. How much money are we talking? Uh, right now, we have about $56,000 in cash. That's and... a, on top of your emergency fund? Yes, sir. Well, that's – no, no, I'm sorry. 41000 We have 56000 total. Okay. 41000 is your emergency fund? 15000 Oh, okay. Fund. Okay, so we got fifteen in the emergency fund. What's outside of the emergency fund in cash? $41,000. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're cooking with gas. So you've got baby step six, paying off the house early, and you're saying, hey, we've been going real hard. Is it okay for us to slow down and enjoy our lives? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, I guess my fear is, you know, with college prices being – college tuition being so expensive i just don't know how much what's the cap where to stop where to start i mean really just right yeah i mean my kids are my biggest how old are these worry kids at this point well i have a nine-year-old stepson and i have a one-year-old daughter Okay, we've got 17 years till college and we've got another nine years till college you got plenty of time you guys have done really well I'm not super worried about them being able to afford going to college debt free with the way you guys have handled your finances. Is that what you're worried about? Will be will we be able to afford it? Um yeah, I I am worried about that. I am. Um but more or less, you know, I I would like uh I would like my kids, you know, I'm I'm 27 years old. I I my wife's 29, but I I fear every day that I I just don't want my kids needing anything <laughs> ever <laughs> yeah if that makes sense well i mean you're a great dad for wanting that but i, I don't want you living in this fear every, you said i'm living in fear every day uh and that borders on paranoia at that point and so i, I want you guys to you guys have done so well you've worked so hard you have forty one thousand dollars sitting there in liquid cash yeah. so have some fun have you guys been on a vacation well we do we do enjoy our vacations we do we uh chancellor year Chancellor, can I speak to you as a dad uh, of three? I totally yes, understand your heart that you don't want your kids to want for anything. But the way that sounds is if you have the pressure that you've put on yourself to fund their entire life. The way you said it sounded way more than college. And George has already made it clear you're going to be fine on college fund and you just keep doing what we teach there and they're going to be fine. They're going to have plenty. But this idea that I don't want my kids to want for anything, I completely understand that. Believe me, I understand you. But your job is not to fund their life. They're gonna, they have a role that they were created to fill. There's work they want to do. There's dreams that they have. It's, that's on them to do that. It's not on you to fund their entire life. Okay. Okay. You needed to hear that, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. You're a good dude. You're a good dude. Look, the baby steps are the baby steps. You're doing it, man. Keep walking it out. Relax outside of that. Your kids are going to make their own decisions. You, you, your job is not to, now look, if you want to do a mutual fund and something for them down the road and give them a great start and whatever and put some nice strings on all that, that's all good. But again, I feel this heavy weight on you that needs to be released today. Okay, so I guess that leads me into my next question. Um, what could I start doing? You know, like I, I have a really good job. I I can't complain about my job. However, I don't absolutely love my job. Mm -hmm. But you know, I I have this dream of <laughs> you know working for myself. Great. Or, Tell me what that would be. Yeah. I don't care how pretty it sounds and how great of a business plan you have. Tell me what right now in this very moment you would do for yourself if you knew you couldn't fail. What kind of business? What would you do? And honestly, I think I would do landscaping. 
It's fantastic. I, I truly love landscaping. I've it's done fantastic. it. I did it. Okay. Now listen, no. Chancellor, you're in a position, man, where you can start to plan this out and start this thing on the side with no risk. How much money do you make in your current job? Well, it's a little bit. It fluctuates quite a bit, but I'd say between one hundred and thirty and one hundred and fifty. All right, so let's ju- let's just pick one hundred and fifty as a number you would want to replace. And if I promised you that you could make one hundred and fifty today, running your own landscaping business, how quickly would you resign? <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, my man. So here's the deal: what is it going to take for you to eventually start that business and take care of your family? in that business. Well, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could keep busting it the way you're busting it. You got some money right here, George. He's got some money that can begin to be the seed for starting that landscaping business. And maybe you do it on the side and you hire a couple young guys and you're the face of it and, the, and you build this thing up, you build it up and you get uh, enough money in that landscaping business account that you've got six months of your salary there. And you know, if I just go at this full time, I've got the pipeline full. I can go. This becomes a math equation. That's right. I, start today. Start pursuing today by planning and thinking through. How would I do it? What's the best way to do it? Save it all up and step into it or start it on the side and establish it? I really like starting it on the side and establishing it, by the way. And, Chancellor, okay. you can do that now. Can you not? Yes, sir. I, I actually, you know, I have about 10 yards a week I do right now. Oh, look at there that. I had a sneaky suspicion, George, that he was already dabbling. <laughs> My yard's next, man. That's. I'm so <laughs> glad people have a passion for landscaping, Ken, because I have zero. Yeah. So, listen, yeah. man, you have done so well. You're 27 years old. You make $150,000. Yeah. You're in baby step six. You have a pile of cash. You need to let go of this fear and yeah. start getting excited about your life again. Your kids are going to be fine. You need to start dreaming and uh, really going after this thing like Ken's talking about. Yeah, and you've got it. Chancellor, those 10 yards, uh, every nickel that you make uh, or rather keep after you pay for the you know the lawn care equipment and all the things and gas, right, um, that's just going in that side account. And I'm building that side account up, and I'm building it, and I'm building it, and I'm building it. And I'm trying to figure out, can I put six months of my salary, what I currently make, in that account? And I'm building up the clients, and I'm going, I know that I can blow this thing wide open. And there's no risk here, George. You know, we talk about stepping from the boat right on the dock. That's what this side hustle is. And then he's going to be in such great financial shape that he doesn't have the pressure that a lot of entrepreneurs face. It's amazing how many times people get their financial life in order and then they can focus on purpose and career. It's incredible. Yeah. If only we had somebody here at Ramsey Solutions that could help him figure out that dream. Cough, cough. Oh, wait a second. Wait, we can do that. Fun stuff. Hey, I want to thank you, George. We had a great time today. We did. Fun stuff, man. Great, great job. Always great to be with you. I want to thank our amazing producer, James Childs, and equally amazing associate producer and call screener, Kelly Daniel. I mostly want to thank you, America, for listening because we do this for you. This is your show. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. 